Well, hello folks, I'm Bradley J, and we're going on a road trip. I think you'll find this a little different than most. I'd like you to come along. We're going to see some high desert, some higher mountains, and talk to a local artist who's also a grizzly bear whisperer. Come on. I've always wanted to go to Wyoming and for some reason have never made it there. And uh, in particular, the Grand Teton Mountains have always been on my bucket list. This looked like a good place to take a first shot of the Grand Teton Mountains. We caught it at just the right time. The sun angle is perfect, reflecting off the stark contrast of the snow. And the temperature is 39 degrees, but the sun is very warm. And it's April and there's nobody here. Here I am in the middle of the highway. Nobody and nobody. And just adventure ahead. Let's go. Here we are at Elk Flats with the Grand Tetons behind us. As we get closer, they get bigger and bigger. Uh, millions of years ago, the Earth's crust thinned out in certain places, and this is one of the places. And towards the west, the mountain shot up, and towards the east, the crust dropped down, which made for an impressive contrast. And the Grand Teton Mountains. Let's get closer. Well, look here. Here's a path that goes all the way to those mountains. You want to walk there? I'm just kidding. We're going to visit a historic site, a little cabin. Back in the 1880s, there was a man named J. Pierce Cunningham who actually settled here despite the really hard winters. You can imagine how the wind whips through here. And he settled here. He initially opposed expansion of this national park, but uh, changed his mind and with uh, 97 other owners in this area, they agreed to sell their land in an effort to start a park. Want to go in and see what it looks like? Could this really be that old? It's a two room cabin. Whoa, a gopher or some type of animal. All right, let's take a look at his view. Here we are in the cabin. It's pretty cold in here. And you get up in the morning and what do you see? Oh, look at that. Well, you've all heard of the farmer outstanding in his field. Well, I'm the broadcaster outstanding in my field. And right now this is my field. As you can see, there's no one else here. So it's my field. Started out today in the mountains and it was snowing and raining and to get out of the snow and rain I'm driving about 175 miles. Hi folks here we are in Dubois Wyoming and I went over to the Cowboy Cafe and I was asking around in there for people to interview about this cool town and I ran into a guy named Steve and a woman named Colette. They gave me a heads up on a couple people to talk to. One is named Gary He's down that way. In the process of trying to find Gary, I got lost. But in the process of getting lost, look what I found. This panorama. Finally did find Gary, and he is quite a guy. Gary had to come get me on the side of the road. But we hooked up, and we're here in his home slash gallery. He's been painting a long time, and he's lived in this area a long time, and he knows all about it. Tell me a little bit about you. Well, I was born into a pioneer ranching family in uh, far eastern Wyoming. Uh, goes clear back to even my grandparents and great-grandparents that were on both sides that lived in that area. Uh, when I was a young child, we moved to Casper, Wyoming, which is central Wyoming. Uh, my college training was in biology and art, particularly towards wildlife and, uh, and habitats and how how they affect each other, the ecosystems of the area. While I was lost, went up this really beautiful road, and you told me that just the other day, there were a hundred elk up on that very same hill, and that's a common thing? Uh, it's very common, and uh, summer times, you know, I, I have kind of a hobby where I look for grizzly bears to photograph. Uh, of course, I do that on my terms and not theirs. But they're very interesting animal. I've gotten hundreds of pictures of them. Uh, I guess the easiest way to say is if it's not on your terms, you just back out and go back another day. Gary, when I was down at the Cowboy Cafe, uh, Steve and Colette told me to ask you about the Butch 
Cassidy story. I guess Butch Cassidy hung out around here. Uh, yeah, Butch Cassidy, of course, grew up in Utah. Uh, when he first left home, he was working in a mine in Telluride, Colorado. And uh, after a short period of time, he robbed the bank there. And Butch always made getaways by, before doing jobs, he would uh, stash horses as relays for quite a distance. And he could always outrun the law that way with fresh horses, which he did in the Telluride bank robbery. One of my old partners in a gallery I ran for a number of years was Bud Bowler, who was quite a well-known sculptor. But his grandfather rode with Butch Cassidy and was involved in a lot of the plannings for what Butch did. And Bud had a lot of stories that, you know, I could... Uh, just relay some of the stories that he told would keep you going for days uh, about his grandfather and his association with Butch Cassidy. One other thing I might mention about Butch, he had really endeared himself to the town population. He was known as kind of a Robin Hood, but a lot of his robbings uh, or ventures out robbing, he gave t a lot of the money away to people who needed it. If you needed a grub steak or were down Butch would give you the money for it. And there happened to be a girl who was very sick and they didn't have any medicine in the area. So he rode horseback with a couple horses all the way to Fort Washakie, which is down towards Lander, Wyoming. It's a distance of about 70 miles. And he did all that in one night to bring the medicine up, which actually saved the little girl. So he had, really did endear himself to the population. You heard Gary allude to all the wild animals in the area. Well, here's proof. Herds of deer just wander through people's yards, and they barely even notice, because there's so many of them. And here's a moose. The moose was not bothered. The moose just kind of walked up and walked away. I wish I'd seen a grizzly. Here we are at the Bighorn Sheep Museum in Dubois, Wyoming. The wildlife is really important to the area, and the bighorn sheep, no exception. I know nothing about them. I want to know. So we're here at the Bighorn Sheep Museum, and we're going to talk to Sarah Bridge, who's the boss. Let's go. Welcome. At the beginning of our museum, we, um, we welcome visitors to what people call the Grand Slam of wild sheep found throughout North America. There are four types of wild sheep found throughout North America. These two, considered the thin horns, um, first is the doll sheep, the second is the stone sheep. <clears throat> to our left over here are the two types of bighorns, the Rocky Mountain bighorn. So this is exactly the type in, uh, of sheep you would see up Whiskey Mountain Basin. They're geograph geographically located in the Rocky Mountain West. Over here, you see the desert bighorn. Um, similar, you could see a wider um, horn here, and these are found uh, throughout the so southwestern United States, including Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, and Southern California. A highlight for me in this fine town of Dubois, Wyoming, is the Rustic Pine Tavern Bar. The beer is cheap and cold, the atmosphere warm, the people friendly, and you can really get a sense of how very different rural Wyoming is than urban areas are. And if you don't come to places like this, you will never really understand the difference. A vacation in Wyoming, if you choose it to be, can be mind clearing. I did a lot of driving. I drove 1,400 miles in about four days. I'd get up in the morning and I'd feel great. And you know why? Because I had not been looking at my phone. I was driving. I'd look at it in the morning, and then I would drive for eight, ten hours, and I wouldn't look at it all day. And all those little bothersome cuts into your life weren't affecting me. And a trip like this does give you a chance to gain perspective on your own life. You have an opportunity to step back and see where the life-sapping irritations come from. And most of them, by the way, come in on the phone. 
It's really a very healthy thing. And it gives you a chance to plan your future, to remove unnecessary distractions and focus on appreciating what you have and organizing your life so you can be more efficient in your attempt to get where you want to be, to be fulfilled, to get self-actualized. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. And click on the bell to get notified of future video posts.